11F can direct laser-guided bombs to hit precision targets such as bunkers or bridges. This F-111F is setting off on another mission over Iraq, armed with a pair of GBU-15 laser-guided bombs. The F-111's specialty during Desert Storm was night attack. Although the wild weasels and other anti-radar planes blinded much of the Iraqi air defense network, the Iraqis still had many conventional anti-aircraft guns aimed with optical sights. These guns were almost completely ineffective at night. The F-111 attacked at either low or medium altitudes using its sophisticated terrain-following radar for navigation in the dark night sky. This F-111F has just returned from a mission over Iraq, during which it went into a terrain-following descent, known as a TF descent, to deliver its bomb payload. Going in, uh, we did a TF descent, dropping down to uh, low level into uh, it's a terrain-following radar, automatic t uh, system descent, uh, where you, it's all totally dark outside, and you just uh, descend on radars, and so you're all on instruments. Uh, this is just this side of the border. We go across the border low level real fast, about 600 knots. During a descent, we were, we were getting some uh, some indications on our raw gear. The radar, search radars were picking us up. So uh, it was it was kind of intense, uh, you know, knowing that they knew that we were coming and, then, and not being able to see anything outside and just kind of going on instruments. Uh, what we did was we came in low level, climbed to 5,000 feet, dropped the bombs, we turn away from the target, continue to laze until the uh, bomb impacts, and then we get back down to low level for the egress. It gives the uh, WISO um, a better look angle into the target and a little more energy on the bomb. The attack pod underneath the F-111F is the key element in pinpoint laser strikes. The pod contains a laser designator. The weapon system officer, or WIZO, aims the laser at the target and the bomb homes in on reflecting laser light. The bombs have a small sensor in their nose which can sense the laser light bouncing off the target. The sensor in the nose of the bomb automatically steers the bomb into the target. This is a videotape from an F-111F attacking an airfield in Iraq. Other strike units in the Gulf were equipped with the newer F-15E Strike Eagle. The Strike Eagle is a two-seat version of the single-seat F-15 Eagle interceptor. The WIZO in the rear seat operates the terrain-following radar and target sensors like his counterpart in the F-111F. This permitted the Strike Eagle squadrons to carry out their dangerous low-altitude missions under the protective cover of darkness during the opening stages of the air campaign. The WIZO can see the target using a high-resolution radar imaging system, as we see here. In this case, he is examining an airfield and selecting targets. The F-15E is also fitted with a lantern night attack system. This provides the pilot and WIZO with thermal images of the terrain in front of them. The WIZO can then use the thermal imaging night vision system to pick out pinpoint targets first identified by the Corsair radar system. F-111s and F-15s took part in the anti-runway campaign using the French-designed Matra Durandal bomb. It is propelled by a rocket and penetrates deep below the runway, exploding moments later.
Besides the specialized attack aircraft, fighter bombers were used extensively in Operation Desert Storm in daylight interdiction raids to pound Iraqi army formations. The F-16 fighter bomber bore the brunt of these missions to the U.S. Air Force. Many of the squadrons taking part in these missions were flown by Air National Guard pilots, their tails emblazoned with the insignia of their home stations, such as Syracuse, New York, and South Carolina. Prior to the war in the Gulf, these pilots were flying commercial airliners, while the ground crews were back in the States at their regular civilian jobs. The A-10, popularly called the Warthog by its pilots, played a unique role in the Desert Storm Air War. It is designed for close air support, attacking tank columns and artillery emplacements with gunfire, bombs, and guided missiles. In its nose is a massive 30-millimeter multi-barrel cannon, able to penetrate the side armor and tops of tanks. The A-10's ability to get down low, hold up well against substantial ground fire, and hang around long enough to find targets, made it one of the unsung heroes of coalition air forces. A-10s flew over 8,000 sorties during the war, attacking many targets, including Scud launch sites. Although the newer smart munitions, such as laser-guided bombs, attracted most of the attention during the war, over 90% of all bombs dropped on Iraqi targets were conventional. One of the most common munitions for close air support missions was the cluster bomb. A cluster bomb consists of an outer shell filled with dozens or hundreds of bomblets, depending on the mission it's required to fulfill. An anti-personnel cluster bomb will hold hundreds of small bomblets intended to eliminate infantry positions, while a cluster bomb designed for an anti-tank role will carry fewer but more powerful bomblets designed to knock out tanks and other armor weapons. After the cluster bomb is dropped, the outer container peels away and the target area is blanketed with a deadly carpet of explosions. The ground crew of this A-10 squadron is preparing a load of cluster bombs for an A-10 mission against Iraqi armed forces in occupied Kuwait. The high tempo of air operations was made possible not only by the determination of the pilots, but by the dedication and skill of the ground crews. At the same time, we need to remember that uh, our young maintenance kids around here, they're the real heroes in this. Pilots go fly the good jets and everything, but they're the ones that keep them going. And uh, those are my heroes, these uh, 21, 22-year-old kids that are out here turning these aircraft right now. Uh, they're the real heroes around here. The U.S. Navy and Marine Corps also played a key role in the air war. Launched from carriers stationed in the Red Sea and in the Persian Gulf, the F-14 Tomcat provided combat air patrol for Navy strike missions much like its land-based counterparts, the F-15 and the Tornado. Two squadrons of aging A-7s were also deployed in Operation Desert Storm. The A-7 was used for daytime interdiction missions as well as attacks on airfields and 